I heard a loud sound. I thought that a car on the street run someone over. I turned around. A girl was laying on the pavement. Remembers a witness to the tragic and unfortunate events that happened on June 28, 2008. Many speculate that there's more to the story than what was reported in the media. Regarding the tragic case of Roslana Korshinova, a beautiful model with seemingly everything going for her. Questions arise about the potential influence of a modeling and beauty industry on her downfall, or if her involvement with a mysterious cult played a role in her death. Roslana Korshinova was born on July 2, 1987 in Almaty, Kazakhstan. She lost her father when she was only five years old, so her mother raised her and her brother by herself. She wasn't on the brink of poverty. However, finances for her family were difficult, as her mother was the sole provider for the family. Koshinova spent her childhood in the small military city. These were special cities, which were created or repurposed for military officers and their families in the USSR times. Living in those cities were considered prestigious, as usually they had great infrastructure and security. In Kushinova's family there was a strong discipline. She had to wake up very early, and she often adapted to her mother's working schedule, waiting for her to come home, often spending hours alone. Roslana was very intelligent, and with different degrees of fluency she spoke Russian, Kazakh, English, and German languages. Koshinova was not well liked in school. She was often bullied for her hair and appearance, as her classmates thought she looked old fashioned because of the way she styled her hair. Roslana, nicknamed the Russian Rapunzel, rose to fame at 15 years old. Roslana was initially discovered by Debbie Jones, Model Swan agent, who saw her photos in Linguistic Club article in the magazine All Asia while flying on the airplane. Roslana was very quickly introduced to the industry's lifestyle, parties, drugs and alcohol. However, according to friends, Roslana wasn't interested in that. In her free time, she would write poetry and post her poems on social media. Koshinova was represented by Image in New York, Paris, London and Milan, by Beatrice Agency in Milan, by traffic models in Barcelona, by Marilyn Model Agency and I Casting in Moscow, which was her mother agency. British folk pronounced Koshinova as a face to be excited about in 2005. Koshinova modeled for the covers of French L and the Russian version of Vogue. She also modeled in print ads for Nina Ricci, Blue Girl by Bloomerine, Clarence, Moschino, Vera Wang Langeri and others. Roslana is most famous for her commercial for Nina Ricci perfume, which depicts Roslana as a beautiful princess in a pink dress reaching out for the apple, which looks similar to the shape of Nina Ricci perfume bottle. This commercial would become one of the most famous and beautiful campaigns the brand ever created. On June 28, 2008, Roslana was found dead on the street near her apartment building in Manhattan. In four days, she would turn 21 years old. She was lying helpless on the road, and her beautiful long hair everyone were fascinated by were cut short, presumably by scissors. Moscow mortician Soji, who worked on her makeup in a Moscow morgue, stated, the hair could fall out because of a strong impact but it could not become shorter. When I was preparing the body for a funeral, I noticed that the hair was in a very poor condition. I even offered to find her a wig, but her relatives refused. The ends were uneven, as if someone had cut it with scissors. In Rizlana's flat, where she only moved to a few months ago, the police didn't find anything, no sign of struggle, no suicide note. According to the official version, Roslana opened the balcony door, cut the window net and jumped. 
she was only wearing a t-shirt and jeans. Rizlana's family and friends didn't believe the cause of death to be suicide, as they found it strange that there was not suicide note, and that Rizlana was found 15 meters away from her apartment building. It is thought that she could only be found that far away only if she ran and jumped, or if she was pushed. Rizlana's mother conducted a private investigation as well as autopsy, and according to the results, Rizlana's traumas consist with hit and run. Although traumas while falling and hit and run are often similar, Rizlana's fiancé Mark Kamensky didn't notice any signs of Rizlana being depressed or upset the night before when they saw each other. And Rizlana's friend Kira was talking with Rizlana the day before her death, and she couldn't believe Rizlana was gone, as Rizlana seemed her normal self on the phone. The day before, she was in a good mood. She had a lot of plans, wanted to go to a birthday party. She had a to-do list on her table, where one of the tasks was, return library books. Tell me, who will write something like that if they were planning to die? I think, Rosalana was killed. Money was the reason. I didn't receive any of her earned money. All the money was taken by the agent and supposedly Rizlana's friends and ex-boyfriend. Through court ruling, Rizlana's mother remembers. Rizlana's work colleagues also remember she was unhappy with her agency, as they were taking a big cut of her payments. She also told her mother she wanted to quit modeling. However, there were no formal complaints or claims found. Not long before her death, Roslana joined a controversial self-development group called the Rose of the World, described as having dehumanizing practices. This group ideology was based on Lifespring Cult, founded in USA. The group would conduct the sessions, which encourage participants to share their worst experiences and recall repressed memories. The cult practices faced controversy and lawsuits, an organization ceased to exist in USA in 1980s. When you enter there, Rose of the World, there is darkness and screams, writes journalist Peter Pomerantsev, British journalist, who conducted his private investigation on Rizlana's death. Everything is orchestrated to affect consciousness and stop critical thinking. Then the life coach appears. He talks so fast, you find it hard to concentrate, and you develop a headache. Rizlana's friend, also a model, Anastasia Drozdova, who was in the same cult, was also found dead in Kiev in 2009. She committed suicide, leaving a note to her mother saying, I'm sorry for everything. When Anastasia's mother inspected her daughter's room, she found lots of materials relating to Rose of the World cult. As it turned out later on, both girls were invited to a seminar at the Rose of the World Center as they experienced career and relationship difficulties. The seminar promised to help them by providing healing experience. In the course of the seminar, the guests shared their traumas with the rest of the group, and it was remembered that Roslana shared the death of her father and how unhappy she was in love life. The Rose of the World cult convinces its members to pay for the seminars and Roslana and her friend were among the ones who decided to continue their involvement with the group. Roslana was a member of this cult for three months. The members of the group deny any influence on Roslana's or Anastasia's death. Both girls changed in behavior after they joined the cult, as their friends remember, noting that Roslana became more aggressive and Anastasia more introverted. Peter Pomerantsev, who was investigating the case extensively, suggest involvement with the cult the reason for suicide. Speculations suggest that Roslana had some troubles in her relationship with her ex-boyfriend, Artyom, what could lead to her being more susceptible to the cult teachings. Roslana Korshinova is also mentioned in Epstein's flight records for his private Boeing 727, known as the Lolita Express. According to the documents released January 2024, Virginia Jufri, one of the victims of the island, 
and the most outspoken among them was questioned if she had any knowledge of the model. She replied, I am so sorry to hear the news of Roslana, and my condolences are with her family and friends, she continued. I can say that I have never had any meetings with her. Sorry not to be of any help there. To this day, there are more things that are unclear about Roslana's tragic and sudden death. On July 7, 2008, Koshinova was buried at Kovenskoy Cemetery in Moscow. Her mother, Valentina, told Russian newspaper Komsomolskaya Pravda that Moscow was one of her daughter's favorite cities and that she would want her beloved Moscow to be her last resting place. Ultimately, the loss of Roslana prompts reflection on the darker aspects of the beauty and entertainment industry, shedding light on the need for mental health awareness and support.